Hey guys, today I want to talk about a disqualification of the Magic Cup. David Wolf from Ireland was playing chart a course and discarded two cards, which was incorrect. And the two cards he discarded actually were helpful. Now in his deck, in all fairness to him, he does have a card, Battle of Wits or Champion of Wits. And that card will uh, discard two cards. So in context, he's discarding extra cards, which normally would not be considered cheating because that's not helpful. But in his deck and in this circumstance, it did help him because he would have lost the game had he not, not done that. I am a little interested to know what percentage of mistakes help players playing extra land like Alex Bracitti is obviously very helpful and we can all agree that if you're allowed to play multiple lands, multiple explorers, then you're going to be ahead of on tempo, you haven't really lost any card advantage since your land are in play, and you're going to most likely win. We can also agree that if someone destroys a card, same with Alex Bracitti, if someone kills your creature and you don't how you put the creature back into your hand instead of the graveyard that is also an advantage here it's a little harder to see because you have to pay play a certain deck but there are decks like dreads where cards in hand are not as important as cards in the graveyard and this is the case so he was disqualified and he was given a game roll violation for discarding too many cards in which was intentional to gain an advantage. He was disqualified and the Irish team will continue on day two at a huge disadvantage. They will take a team match loss each round. So essentially it's like he lost every single game. I think that is fair. It gives some possibility that Team Ireland could win, but it makes it very, very difficult to do so at this high of a level. I do want to draw attention to, you know, I've always felt it kind of strange that mistakes are made and for the most part, maybe it's because opponents don't want to report a mistake that helps. Uh, if your opponent makes a mistake, maybe you don't tell him or her. But I always find it so strange that in the right deck, so for 99% of the time, or 100% of the time, Alex Buccini is not going to do this unless he's playing Dreads or a deck that allows it, that wants cards in their graveyard. It's always interesting to me that all the mistakes benefit, and none of them... So I was talking to Sophie the other day, and we actually had made a mistake with paying her too much, which she caught, and then she gave back the money because she's a very good worker. That's kind of how a mistake, and the mistake was when we travel Saturdays, we go to Dallas and the hours are kind of weird because it's 6 a.m. until 10 p.m. Uh, and it's hard, so we, we pay for the whole time, but obviously it's atypical because we don't always, we always leave at 6 a.m., but we don't always get back at 10 p.m. Sometimes we'll get back much earlier and sometimes we'll get back much later. So mistakes on that part, yeah, I overpay my employees sometime and logically I would underpay them as many other times and they would catch that and tell me, hey, yes, you underpaid me, pay me more. But my employees, they would also say, oh, you pay me too much. Here's some, here's, you know, I'll work a few more hours this week or something like that. So I've always found it so interesting that mistakes at the pro level always benefit, always save. You know, it's, especially with today's technology and the video cameras everywhere, I just don't see why it would be worth doing so. And, and you know, I don't see mistakes on the other side being made. Not nearly as often as mistakes that are beneficial. But if everyone was, if it was a mistake, then it should be 50-50 or at least, you know, 70-30. I don't know. It's got to be, you would make, it would be like a punt, but it would be like trying to cheat the punt. So instead of, you know, in this case, maybe he discards a wrong card or something. And the card that he needs in his graveyard is not there, but he discarded two. So then I would be like, all right, so that kind of makes sense because 
maybe he didn't know what was going on, but he put exactly what he needed in his graveyard to survive. And it's unfortunate to his teammates, and it's unfortunate to uh, Magic the Gathering, because anytime someone is disqualified, and anytime someone has potentially cheated, it does bring on this a discussion we have all the time on the Pro Tour, is does this really make sense? Like, did that person cheat in the context? And largely, it's always helped the player. They discard when they need to discard, they draw extra cards when they need to draw extra cards, they stack their deck when they need to stack their deck, they stack their opponent's deck. I mean, remember that one dude, he could stack his opponent's deck and make him draw land for five turns in a row. I think his name was Jared. And how are you going to beat that? So we see so many different ways to cheat. This is the first time I've heard of a non-dredge deck, and it's because of standard, of course, where you, you want cards in your graveyard and you're going to give up your card advantage for temp. I guess it's tempo in your graveyard. Anyway, that's it. Bye, guys.